So this just like quick practice that we were doing here, if especially if you don't have uh, artistic ability, you know, this is a little bit of a challenge because how, what do I even do? So I have this activity that we'll do for a little bit uh, for us to practice with the pen tablet and to get accustomed to it uh, is, uh, is this, this little activity here. So uh, go, go out of um, animate for a moment again and we'll go back to the network folder. We'll go back to the web design folder. Inside of CIS 126, then you want to copy this folder to your desktop. Topic 1, Digital Drawing 1, Brush Tool. Copy that to your desktop or flash drive. Just copy the whole folder, and then we will, we will see what we've got in there. We're going to do a little bit of practice with tracing. So copy that over, and then we will see what, what that's about. So I copied that to my desktop. Once you copy that to the desktop, if you open your, if you open that folder, you've got uh, these sort of like starting point uh, of graphics. There's the preview one that's a PNG file, and then there's the one in anime ready to go. So they kind of go in order of difficulty. Uh, there's kind of like a easy-ish one all the way to a more complex one and so forth. But for a little bit of practice here, there's the very first one there, 01 Hernandez. Um, just double click the, the Adobe Animate file of that first one, 01 Hernandez. That opens up this, uh, this, uh, this Adobe project where if you zoom out, you've got the the drawing the original drawing on its own layer and then you've got a drawing layer so for the practice of this using the brush tool we're going to draw this character now if you if you switch to the brush tool i would recommend to use some sort of like red color or yellow or any color because it can be changed later you don't have to start with a black line right now. Even though the original is with a black pen, I'm not going to be able to see. If I choose black and I'm drawing on top of the character, I can't see what I'm drawing on. So obviously, you want to change it to any other color. I'm going to go with red. Now when I draw on top of it, I will, I will see my own lines. So this is to, to get the practice of, um, you know, you don't have to get it exactly perfect, but try to draw the character and I'm I also change the the uh, the brush tip instead of the round one I switched over to this more like calligraphy one you see right next to it there I also get that different kind of shape I have calligraphy square circle you know the circle one is fine if you don't change it that's fine but I, I switched over to that sort of oval one, and I turned up turned on pressure sensitivity. So we'll do this with the brush tool for a moment. This will give you the practice about what are the um, what's this tool like, and you can hide that layer once in a while just to look at it. And you're saying, well, I don't like the side of the face, so let me erase it and do it again. Right now, in my case, this line here is just one line wherever this line connects that's a color so if i select that and delete all of that deletes if i select this this is connected to this and this and this and this and this, and this. it's all the same color it's all connected you know there's a break right here this is connecting everywhere that it's the same color so be careful if i delete this everything deletes this is one shape right there that's on that's out there by itself. <clears throat> so don't try to, you know, follow the lines perfectly. You could if you want to. But the point of not following it perfectly is then you get these examples like I have up here on mine where you know the hair is like this and there's parts that are overlapping. I could use the eraser and waste my time and get it perfectly erased like that. Or 
like I said, wherever there are these overlaps, you sort of like invert the color on top of itself. So if I switch to my selection tool, so watch this, if I go to the corner right here and pu pull that corner out here, well that did that cut for me. Actually I'm also going to turn off this, uh, uh, this uh, snap to object, this magnet, I usually don't like it. But if I grab that corner and pull it down over here, you see wherever the color uh, overlaps itself, when you let it go, it'll then delete itself. And then that I can further remove. So the point of this is to, you don't have to draw it perfectly. You can, like this part, I, I want to remove this little extra bit. You can highlight, I mean, you can uh, overlap onto it and then delete it. And then I might zoom in, I might zoom out, and then come back and draw some more. do these eyebrows and then the nose maybe I'll change my my brush width actually I think it's a little too thick so you can use the arrow keys uh, not the arrow keys but you can use the uh, the brackets left bracket right bracket on your keyboard to increase and decrease the sizes of these brushes over here the, the lips and when I'm doing any sort of tracing I usually turn on and off the, um, the, the behind the drawing from behind uh, don't worry about filling in the color completely just yet like in the hair just go with the outlines and you can fill in the details When you trace over something, especially a, a, a professional, a professional's work, you see the details of what they did to make it what it is. Like this is trying to be somewhat of a realistic character, and therefore, for example, there's there's the uh, the folds of the cloth to add that realism. There are. There are the folds on her face also to give her the various character. Um, those highlights are, are kind of simple, but I think they work pretty well. It looks like a nice you know, highlight in the hair. And if I look at it, it's just an interesting shape. It's some curves in the hair. And just in black and white, I see this example like that's like highlighted hair. There's like shine in her hair there. Her, her lips and her lipstick. There's a little bit of a, of a white spot there. That's a highlight for, you know, um, for showing depth. So keep going on that. Try to highlight, uh, try to outline it. And again, you don't have to get every single, every single line out of it. You can just go as, as much as you can, just as a sort of a practice. And again, like I said, what I'm usually doing is I'm doing one line at a time or something. And if I like the line, I move on. If I don't, I can undo it and then keep going. And then I add more to it and it keeps coming little by little together. So I'll go over here. Now class, when I say 10 minutes, I mean 10 minutes. So the people that came in here, you're pretty behind now because we needed to open a file. And I was showing you various techniques and so forth. So if you're used to previous classes where you can take as much a break as you want, that was the other class. In my class, 10 minutes is 10 minutes. So if you came in late, what you need to do is go to the network folder. In the network folder, I added a brand new item there, Digital Drawing 1. You want to copy that folder right there. Copy that folder to your desktop. And in there, I've got and item 01, let me repeat myself again, when I say 10 minutes, I mean 10 minutes class. If you're used to other classes that you can take as long as you want, that's the other class. In this class, if you're coming in late, I've already showed people several things.
So if you're coming in late, you need to go into the network folder, copy the topic one file to your desktop, and open file 01. We've already been working on this for a little while. So continuing here, the, the edges, you want to keep adding all of these extra little lines. And ultimately, when we fill in the color, if I wanted to fill in the color to her jacket, this one doesn't end. I mean, it, it ends right here. If I try to drop in a color right here, there's no solid color to drop in her color. So you can be judicious right here and, you know, complete the drawing up to a certain point so that there is a solid area to drop in color. That'll work fine. And again, you don't have to get the perfect, uh, you know, all of the lines, and I'm going to uh, skip his, his signature down here, but I want to, to fill in enough of the lines so that I can then fill in color. Because all of this, I'm drawing it with the brush tool. I might want to go back in and draw the face a little bit differently again. I can erase that and fix the eyes up just a little bit. I like that eye. I like that eye, I like that eye by itself and that eye by itself, but maybe not together. <coughs> you want to finish the hair. So this is just a little bit of practice using the brush tool, the Wacom pen tablet. Because if you don't have the artistic ability, it's perfectly fine to start off with someone else's drawing, but then make it your own. Maybe I'm going to go in and change your hair style or the colors and such. But at a certain point, you know, I have to fill in a few more items here so that it's all a solid area to fill in color. And I drew it all with red simply because I can't see my lines on top of the black lines. After I finish drawing it, I can select all of those lines and easily change it to the real color that I want. So I started it in red, and then when I drew it, I changed the color, but I'll get to that later. So practice that for a moment. Uh, work on trying to trace that drawing for a little bit. practice with uh, with the brush tool and the pen tablet try to fill in try to make sure that wherever you draw something make sure you fill in you, know, you complete the lines right here if I fill in her hair color it's gonna spill into her face make sure you close up some of these lines redraw that eye and like I said you can use this this effect where you pull these lines on top of the lines so a moment ago this nostril these lines were touching so I grabbed the edge and stretched it so that it cut and now I've got two separate lines I can grab these little tufts of hair and also kind of pull it together like that, and then now it's completed. So maybe like your first pass through it, do it a little bit loose. Maybe you don't have to follow every single line. Just go through it this first time. And then on a second pass, you can go in and refine your lines a little bit. Just a little bit. If you're having any trouble, call me over, but just practice drawing on that drawing.
So on uh, on today's on today's class, we're going to do a little bit of drawing, like we're doing here. We're going to do another sort of in class drawing activity in a moment. Um, on Wednesday, uh, we're going to have probably mostly lab time for you to actually work on the first assignment. So I still have to show you well what what are the examples of the uh, model sheets. We'll get to that, but we're going to do this for a little bit more. You can fill in colors also if you want. Um, in a little bit, then we'll switch over to a different uh, project or uh, activity in just a moment, but kind of work on that for just a little bit. And let's see what you come up with. Now, eventually, when you get to this point, let's say I, I sort of feel like it's pretty close to finished. One thing that I really like about Animate is that, again, all of these lines are all mathematically defined. And so I, I like where this is, but I can actually use Animate to smoothen things out even more. So watch this. If I select all of my lines, I did Control A to select, which is the same as Edit, Select All, somewhere here. Where is that? Select all. And then I switch to the um, selection tool. There's these two uh, buttons right here, smoothen and straighten. Um, so I made all of these lines, and I like these lines and these curves. They look nice. But if you select it and then press the smooth a few times, one, two, three, whatever you want, it's going to then start to smooth, smoothen your line. So watch this. Mine looks a little like that. I press it one time, another time, another time. Now at a certain point, it goes too much. Like it's way too smooth now. Uh, but if you, after you kind of draw it and then you smoothen it, you get these, you get these much smoother lines. I think it, I think it made her way too smooth. So I'll just take it back once or twice. But even hitting it like once or twice, you know, that's the original right there. And then one and two, I kind of like with two, it doesn't change it a whole lot of these curves these lines are looking really good so I have to fix this one up over here it smoothed it too much but in my case I liked that I drew it and I smoothened it twice usually once or twice gives you good results and you have these really nice now obviously this is a certain style this like brush style not everyone wants that style that's perfectly fine I'm not telling you you have to go in a certain style but for the practice of this particular tool the brush tool you, know, you get some kind of result like this because it's pressure sensitive I'm using the brush tool with the calligraphy nib, and I kind of like how that looks, but you, of course, can do it how you want. I have to reconnect these lines. And so if I control A to select all, I can go in and all of my fill lines. I selected them all and I drew them in red because I needed to see my drawing. I can then go and select 
and put them all to the one color I want. So work on that just a little bit more, but you want to do the outlines with the brush tool and then fill in some colors however you want. Uh, don't worry about getting very complex with, um, and if you haven't done so yet, please mute your device. Someone's device keeps going off. Um, you don't need to fill in all of the details just yet. Of coloring and such, but I'm going to fill in some colors, so I'll give you a few more minutes, five minutes, ten minutes or so, just to do a little bit of something, and then we'll look at one more sort of uh, activity, and then we'll wrap up in a little bit. Thank you. 
See that, so you have to try and part of it.
Okay, at um, 3.30, we'll, we'll go on to the next activity for today. So, create something like that where you're drawing and coloring. You don't have to do it perfectly. You're not going to turn this in, but I want you to practice this. So, in a little bit less than 15 minutes, uh, we're going at 3.30, we're going to do one more guided activity.
the same amount of trouble. I'm inspired by this little sister. I love it. Okay, so we're gonna do something in a little in a little moment. Um, if you've got something like that, that's good. Go ahead and save it. I'm gonna put another folder into that network folder, and then in a moment together we will look at one more concept. So you should save your current project. You can keep working on it a little later. This is just practice. You won't need to turn it in. But now what you can do is, in the network folder, I added a new item here, Topic 1, Drawing 2, Advanced Colorization. Copy that folder to your desktop, and we'll work on that project for a little bit. So you want to copy from the network folder uh, Digital Drawing 2. What I've got in there is um, there's already these characters that have, that have already been traced, they've already been drawn in Animate. What this activity that we'll do for a moment is 
to practice with a little bit of coloring. Question? Okay, yeah, just go ahead and save your work and then we'll go on to this and we'll come back to that. So, this particular one, uh, these are already drawn. We're going to fill it in with basic colors and then practice with a little bit of this colorization concept that I mentioned earlier about dividing up the shapes of colors and filling in highlights and, and shadows and such. So, um, uh, I'm going to get this one, the Zyphoon. So let's open up this one. Any one that you want, actually. But I'm going to go with this one. The Zyphon. Um, so when you open that one up, it's got this character. And the first thing we want to do is, well, it's black and white. You know, all of these edges have already been drawn. It's black and white, so it's a matter of filling in colors. So fill in the colors of, of the character however you want, and then we'll talk about doing the trick to do the cell shading, highlighting, and all of that good stuff. Let's just grab a bunch of colors, colorize the character however you want. Anyone you want, but if you want to see the, exactly the one I'm going to work on, you can open up Dai the Zaifu. So what's interesting is on the projector, the colors look really washed out. The skin tone on my screen looks fine, but then on the projector looks really, really gray. Anyway, just fill in basic colors, and then we'll talk about colorizing this with some cell, cell shading techniques. So I'm going to keep this pretty simple and say that my light source is on the left. Somewhere over here, there's some light going towards the character from left to right. The easy way to remember then is what's closer to the light source is lighter, and what's further is darker. So this sort of one-third of the character over here will have the highlights, and this third over here will have the shadows, and in the middle, the base color. Now, obviously, where the hair falls on the face, and the nose, and all that good stuff also creates shadows and highlights and everything. But if I just have that basic idea, I can then start to use the line tool or the pencil tool to start cutting areas where I'm going to fill in the color. So for example, if I I'm gonna switch over to the to the pencil tool so that I can use I can use my Wacom pen. Pencil tool is a stroke. And I I'm gonna get I need any color that I can just differentiate one from what's already there. So I give a red hair, blue clothes, um, I'll go with like a yellow color. Just any color so I can tell apart what I'm doing. Pencil tool 
yellow color and then I go in and start to draw oh, also I would say here um, change your pencil mode to the hmm, smooth it's on straighten at the moment so it's gonna make really straight lines which you probably don't want on an organic figure uh, so I'll switch over to the smooth mode of the pencil the smooth mode of the pencil and then I can start to draw for example some sort of line like this and wherever I draw the lines remember it doesn't matter I can delete them later I drew it on her face but right now I'm focused on her hair so here I've drawn I've divided up an area that I'm gonna draw I'm gonna add a lighter color of her hair on the opposite side I'm gonna draw some sort of shape to then have a darker portion of her hair on the hands right here I want to divide it up somewhere right here so that I have a, a part for a lighter color and somewhere here for a lighter part and then on the opposites. So let me zoom in a little bit and then I'll draw somewhere right here and then on the legs over here on the shoes maybe something like that. All of these lines can easily be removed it's really gray on the projector, but it is a better skin tone on my screen. But anyway, I've divided it up right here so that I'll put a brighter skin tone, divided for a darker skin tone, brighter shoe color, darker shoe color. So it's basically dividing in a very simple way the left side, the right side of, this, of these objects so I can fill in the highlights and the shadows. And you can get as complex as you want in terms of um, you know, going in something like this, and then on the back, and like my how my handout had was just divide up these areas so that I can start with my base color, go to a darker color. on the areas where there might be the shadow if my light source is on the left and the shadow is on the right on the back of her head over here is where it will be dark her hair behind her over here this part closer to the light I'm going to choose a dark a brighter version of the color over here I can fill in more Dividing up the shape into three this is what I say about thirds. There's the basic color, there's a the highlight color, there's the shadow color. So it's a matter of starting off with your base color and then darkening it or lightening it. How much is totally up to you because then if it's the darker the darker the color, the um, you know the more dramatic, the more harsh the lighting is. Uh, 
as I as I double click some of these lines and then delete them just to kind of get a sense of what they look like. You see that I'm starting to get that that depth. There's the shadow to the right side, the light on the left side. Uh, I am already kind of thinking a little bit further ahead in terms of well, this lapel is casting a shadow on her own shoulder. And again, this stuff takes practice. It takes observation. You you look at your uh, your favorite um, animations, and then you look at it in a more critical eye, and you start to see these sorts of things, how it's being filled in with color and, and highlights. That's why in the assignment in the discussion board, um, it asks you for a couple of things. What's your favorite animation and so forth? So that if you think about looking at it uh, in a critical eye, you see some of these things. Adobe Animate can let you do this flat sort of coloring or gradient coloring, very complex sort of ways as well. We kind of take it little by little to get to the more complex stuff. areas to fill in of color but one interesting trick that you can do is eventually I want to remove all of these, these strokes all of these lines that I did with the pencil tool I want to remove them because I only want to leave the, the fill colors well I have to double click delete this one double click delete this one double click actually if they're all if all of these stroke colors if all of these stroke lines are the same color you can delete them all at once with this trick here, if all of them are intersected, so if I just do something like this, so all of these separate lines, this one that wasn't touching this one now is, because I drew this line everywhere, if I double click this line, all of those strokes are the same color. If I double click this line, they're all connected, I can delete them all at once, like this, double click delete. I missed that one of the hair that wasn't connected, but you see all of those that were connected the same color, they all delete very, very easily. So the guided practice that we've been doing today so far has been to get you used to using uh, the Wacom pen tablets to practice with, with drawing with it, with the brush tool, a style of um, colorization, you know, cell shading. Um, and that's going to lead into the first assignment. Um, let me give you a few more minutes to work on this, then I'll talk about that assignment. Uh, it's 3.45, we'll say at 3.50. Uh, I'll, I'll come back to what the assignment is, 
show you some examples when we come back next time. Uh, I, I think we're mostly going to have lab time because then on Monday, this first assignment's going to be due, the model sheets. But let me give you until 3.50, and then I'll break that down.
for today so the uh, assignment uh, is going to be that you make these model sheets now I've put into the network folder uh, a brand new item in there of the the best way to explain what I'm looking for so if you go back to the uh, network folder you've got over here drawing number four model sheets these are examples of model sheets. If we go back to Canvas in a moment, Canvas says you need to draw one, one, one that's required is the turnaround model sheet. Then you can pick two of these other kinds. These other kinds are over here. Expression, pose, color, description, comparison. It's just another example. So a turnaround model sheet is what this is right here. You've got all of these examples of all of these characters, for example, here. It's the character as they turn around. It's that character that from the side, from the front, from the left, etc., like they're turning around. So here's the character. I've got a bunch of them on each folder just to give you more ideas. So here's the character from full frontal, sideways, behind, three-quarter views, etc. You you don't have to draw every single turn because you can be fine with you know front back side these are these are little this one is extra okay, there's the back there's the front there's the side those three right here are good this is extra this is extra you don't have to go with that complex uh, other examples let's see here so this one again they're looking at you full frontal they're looking at you sideways and then behind so this, this, and this. I'm looking for, at the very least, full frontal, side, behind. So the point of the model sheet is to define your character on the different poses that it could be at, because eventually these, you're making these characters that are going to be part of an animated movie for the second assignment, and then two video games. So I want to be able to define my character as much as I can. So there's all of these that you can look at here. And, you know, 
etc. It doesn't have to be a human character. There's a variety of types of characters. Uh, if you look at the back over there, when I turn on the lights, there's this like little robotic circle uh, drone thing. Well, when they when that student tried to do it, they were going to be very very simple with a circle. And I said, okay, you need to convey how is that little circular droid thing? How do you convey that it's sideways? Well, he added then like little side arms or probes or whatever, so that when it's sideways, you see that there's a little probe on the side over here, not just a simple circle. So you can get the examples from previous students over there and these examples here. So I have as well from previous students, like right here. So that's right at the back over there. But here's the same thing, front, side, back. And again, this one started off very simple, and I said, OK, how about for some more interest, how about you put pockets and other sorts of things? Because when it was back like this, imagine with none of these extra lines, it was such a simple shape you couldn't tell from what direction it's at. OK, that's one student. Let's see. Um, here's another example. So front, side, back. Uh, this one was drawn with regular paper. I would prefer that you do it all digitally because eventually you're animating this. Let's see over here. Same sort of thing. This, these are the ones at the back, so I won't show them all, but the same sort of thing. More realistic character. Front. This is a little bit sideways. Not enough, but still good. And the back. Okay, so one of the requirements is to make that kind of model sheet, you have to make a turnaround. At least three, pose, three, three turns. Then you can choose, OK, maybe I want to do an expression model sheet. Well, all of these are exactly that. It's the character with different expressions. This is a little more complex. It's the full body. This one's just focused on the face. Here's how it looks like when it's happy and sad and angry and, tr and sneaky. And this and this. Again, you can look at them all on your own. And then there's an example over here. OK, like very simple shapes. These are like some sort of cylindrical robot thing, whatever. This can have its expressions. Like nothing changes except the eyes. And even that way, you have expressions. So you can pick to do the expression. Or we have also poses. This one's more complex, but this one is about um, making your character in, in different, you know, di doing different things, different poses. Uh, two or three of them, a lot of these are have a lot, but just showing you, you have all of these different things, poses. Colors, this is another one you could choose to do. You've got an example of your character and what are the colors that define the character. So here are just some little dots about these are the colors of the fur here, and these are the colors of the and etc. So this is one kind of color model sheet. This is another one. It's the one character. I like this one a lot in terms of like here's the color swatches, but here's also that's for the hair, that's for the bodice, that's for the iris. And this one, this one's kind of mixing a couple of things. This is a turnaround model, but also color. So the best thing to be just look at all of the examples here. Next up is description. So this one, you, you write explanatory text in your, in your drawing. Not only is it the drawing, but you're explaining something about it, like this one right here. So it's also a turnaround. It, this could have been done with one pose, but then a bunch of little things explaining four foot tall, the hair is like this, etc. So this is an... This is an um, this type of model sheet is the um, description model sheet. There's another one. So this is mixing expression plus color plus the description model sheet. It'd be fine to do one of them. They did three of them. And comparison. So if you're going to work with more than one character, um, you know, here's the different comparisons that this main character is like this, and this is how they relate to the other ones that. And in the folder, again, you, you can, um, oh, and then I have famous. So you can look at all of these famous ones from all of these characters that you may or may not know. So 
again here. This is how they compare. This is a size compare. This is like these are official model sheets from like some official characters. So see how they would do it in real life. Here's a Donald Duck one. So you can just see the various examples. Like that. So the assignment is one is required, the turnaround. Then you get to pick two of these other ones. On Wednesday, we will have most of the day for you to start to work on this. It'll be due on Monday, but you won't have more lab time on Monday to work on it because we're moving on to the next topic. Then you have the weekend to work on it too, and we have lab time on campus, so, uh, I think at the library and such. And the details on Canvas, again, don't forget some of these details. When you create your file, I ask for certain things when you create your file. If you do them wrong, that's part of what's also going to be the grading over here. It tells you exactly. You need this, five points. You need that, five points. This, this, and this. So you might have, um, you might have, you might, you should see that all of the details will be broken down right there to tell you exactly what you need to do. General questions? Um, yes. Unfortunately, I can't let people take the tablets home. You have to do them in class. Oh, so okay. when we have Wednesday, you'll be able to work on it all day there. Wait, so Wednesday sounds like a class time, or um, no, no, no. Oh, Monday? Six. Monday. This class is Mondays and Wednesdays. Yes. Wait. Oh. Just, I didn't understand that I said Wednesdays. Well, one at a one at a time here. So yes. Uh, you have to do it uh, in class here. You check out your, your work. And uh, Wednesday, we'll have one more day. Question over here. Question? No? OK, so the um, this is what we're going to be doing then. Um, we'll, I'll take these back. We went up a little bit long today. But when we come back on Wednesday, it'll be a day to work.